All right, we're gonna do an acorn craft. Oh yeah, cause it's fall and we gotta love some fall things. Okay, so this is a craft and write resource, which means that there is both a craft built into it and it's also gonna inspire some writing. Now I know that teachers face a huge challenge of meeting the needs of all their different learners, so I've integrated this as a craft and writing activity, but also I'm including various different writing style pages, and I'll show those in a little bit. Um, various um, leveled pages, so some writing paper that's appropriate for primary grades and some that are appropriate for your upper level elementary school grades. Some will have writing prompts on them and some will be blank. And there are both nonfiction and fiction writing pages included as well, making this a very one and done resource. And then you can pick and choose which writing paper um, that you wanna use, whether you wanna use the write and, um, sorry, nonfiction, if you wanna use fiction or if you wanna use both, it's really up to you. It's all in control for you as a teacher. It's also gonna allow for a lot of student choice built into this and there's some, not only is it a craft, but it's gonna allow for some art making as well, just slightly into it so it's not just a cut, color, and assemble. There's a little bit more um, in depth and creativity and imagination built into it and each student's gonna walk away with their very own unique craft because there's lots of different bits and pieces and different styles of eyes and such to choose from. Now you don't need to have these two pages do not need to be photocopied for every student. Um, I would just cut these into individual pieces and put maybe two pages per table. And for this, just cut two pages of eyes into strips and stick them at each table. That should be sufficient and then students can choose from that. Um, and then each student will need one of each of these papers. So what we're gonna do is we're going to do our acorn first and I'm gonna be doing wax crayon and watercolor paint for it um, just because it's a little bit quicker for me for this demonstration purpose. However, you can use absolutely any art making medium that you want to use for yours. All right, so I'm going to split mine up into three different sections. So students are gonna use a pick a pattern page um, to pick three patterns that they're going to use in their background and they can apply them however they want. So I'm going to section off, I think, my shell and I'm gonna do my shell or the top of my acorn as the part that has the different patterns in it. You can do it the whole thing, you can do a part of it. It's really, I would leave that up to your students for them to decide. Instead of for me adding the um, kind of like hatching texture on the shell, I'm going to use my pick a pattern lines. And this is where they get to be creative, use any art making medium. We're doing a little bit of art, we're not just coloring. And it's really going to spark your students' imaginations and get them fired up for learning. When they go to get writing, they're gonna have so many ideas and be excited to write because it's really going to be f reflecting the craft artwork that they've just done. And we're really gonna activate those fine motor skills, critical, critical thinking skills, creativity, thinking um, skills, creative thinking skills, and so much more within this artwork um, and craft and write between the writing and the craft and art parts of it. All right, so then I'm going to add a little bit of paint to mine. And then I'm going to go ahead and let it dry. I know I've used some unconventional colors on my my acorn, but I just wanna show you, like I, I just wanted to have some fun with it and let you see the possibilities, right? Because kids can really just let their imaginations roll and roam around. And I think that's some of the nice things that we can allow them to do, right? Let them have some fun. Let them have a little bit of creative freedom and just see what happens. So I'm gonna see what happens when I use some unconventional lines in here and then apply my traditional colors on top. And I think it looks pretty nice. What about you? There is no right or wrong acorn colors. Acorns are obviously a certain brown, <laughs> but 
they start off green, don't they? And look at how nice that looks. Just add, allows students to have their own unique flair to it. Okay, we're gonna let that dry and we're going to move on to doing the other pieces for now. So I'm gonna cut out my acorns stem first, a mouth, and eyes and my bits and pieces that I want to use on my acorn. And it's just such, such a fun style and such unique artwork. This has all been drawn by me. And I really try to speak to the needs and interests of kids. So you're not gonna find this clip art anywhere else. It's not made out of clip art. I've drawn everything and created this resource as a unique piece. In styles that kids really, 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 really like. And so I think it's really going to spark their imagination. Okay, then I'm gonna pick some bits and pieces. I'm not gonna do another mini acorn. Maybe I'm going to do um, this moth. leaf and I'm gonna do that flower. And this is why we need to share the, the different pages with each of your students. It do, you do not need to have one per student. And any leftover bits you can use in your previous years, just save all your extra pieces in an envelope and then you have them for a year after year. And then it's partially ready to go for the following year. Any extra papers from this. Just keep it all together with a lesson plan and you'll be ready to go. This is also a perfect thing to leave if you have a sub in your classroom. Oh my goodness. So easy, right? What an easy activity, activity to do for them. It even comes with a PowerPoint step-by-step -step, so your sub or you don't even have to worry about teaching this. All the steps will be available on a PowerPoint that can be shown to your students, making this nice and easy. We'll add some color. Let's add our stem on top first. Oh my gosh, isn't that just so cute? Guarantee you're not gonna find this style of craft anywhere else. It's really more kind of like if you were to watch the Mizartastic YouTube channel. It's as though you're gonna get one of those, but as a craft. Takes craft to a whole new meaning, to be honest. Okay, then I'm gonna add. <laughs> oh, it's so cute. Isn't it? Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. You know your students are gonna love this. So cute. And once 
once all of your different pieces are assembled, your super cute acorn craft is done. A look at the acorn craft and write the PDF version of it. So just to note that you do not have in this preview the PowerPoint um, presentation, but there is an included step-by-step -step PowerPoint presentation to make all your teaching so much more easy. Or if you have to leave it for a sub, there's no worries because you're gonna have a printed out teacher version of the step-by-steps, but also the PowerPoint to make it awesome. All right, so there's a warming up, warm up drawing challenge because I got, gotta love them drawing skills and any way to add in more creativity. We have a what are, what are acorns uh, page you can use for, you can read out or use as a reading component in this craft and write. They have two different versions of rubrics to suit the needs of your students, a writing PRP. Um, you also have an example of the craft your guide for your educate. You have your pick a pattern page. You have planning pages for both fiction and nonfiction. And then you have various writing pages for nonfiction, opinion to fiction, and some blank ones all ready for you to use so you can teach like a pro and cover all those curricular standards.